which means like that moment has to either be it's a make or break moment like it, it has to either it's either on or it's not and yep. if it's off just by a little bit yep you lose them and that's like the stress sometimes that comes yeah. from that welcome to set life where we tell stories from our industry i'm kelly leger and this is amber buto Hi, welcome to Set Life, coming to you from For The One Studio, Studio One. My name is Kelly Leger. And I'm Amber Buto. And we have special guests with us today, Adam Johnson. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. Honestly, so grateful to be here. I uh, love what you guys do, so it's cool to be on the show. Cool. Thanks. We love you, Adam. <laughs> so it's a um, newly relationship, just met you not long ago. Love what you're doing. Love your fire for the industry, um, your heart for the industry, and um, all that you're creating. Mm -hmm. So where did that start for you? Yeah, so uh, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this too, just like not really knowing a lot about it. And then just having like an epiphany one day where for me, it was like me and my friend in middle school, like going on his sister's laptop and using iMovie and just thinking it was the coolest thing ever. Uh -huh. um, which like blossomed into like a bunch of different avenues and then kind of ended up where I am today, where I own my own business. It's a newer thing. And love what I do and um, creating has always been like that itch that I just like have to scratch. And it's one of those things that's like so fulfilling uh, to create something and like collaborate with people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's been great. Wow. Yeah. One of the things I loved. So when we have obviously, you know, interviewers that we interview you to come on, we have y'all fill out a form like mm -hmm. that tells us all different things and stuff like that. One of the things I love that you wrote on your Form was social security number. I know. Thank you. For yes, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> was uh, you knew you wanted to do this the first time you put a camera in your hands mm -hmm. and started recording with it. I love that. You know, I I love that you can. We, we've heard it a lot on the show. Like that bug, you got bit by that bug. You know, and it was like, wow, yeah. this is amazing. But not only did you find your love in the first time you picked your camera up to getting to the place where now you're able to make that a career for you. Yes. Um, that's a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talking about what was that, what did that look like? You know, what was your journey like? Of course you graduated with a film degree in communications. Um, but let's go from junior high to having your own business. What was that? I journey that. Like? All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And actually, um, filling out that form kind of reminded me of some stuff that I forgot about, mm -hmm. like how it started and what one thing led to another, because I think when you're in the moment and you're doing those things, you're like trying to find out how you can make it into a career. Yeah. But you don't really see it as like, oh, I have to do this thing before I can jump up here and then I can jump up here. And it's like a stepping stone kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool, like filling out the form. I got to see it like fully in front of me. Uh, junior high was like when we were doing like the iMovie stuff. So we'd literally like over the summer go to my friend's house and set up the we were using literally a uh, MacBook Pro like as a camera. And he would be there and he'd be like, OK, three, two, one press record and then I'm like running around doing whatever and then we're just like drag and dropping effects on it and it was like the coolest thing ever we thought it was like amazing yeah he ended up moving and I wanted a MacBook Pro really bad never got it um which is okay it's like very expensive laptop for a yeah. 13 year old to have yeah and uh I didn't know how to edit on any other software and I didn't think any other software was like worthy like I thought mm -hmm. iMovie was like the best thing ever and um finally uh you know i started getting into like me and my friends in high school which is this is so embarrassing like to say but like if anyone that i know from back home is watching this it's like we were obsessed with call of duty and middle school yeah. Yeah. and we started like recording and making little videos and like i was never good at the games so i was the editor and that's kind of how <laughs> i i put in like hours but actually as funny as it is like i was proficient in adobe after effects at like 13 years old wow. because yeah. I was just watching YouTube like every day wow. uh -huh. and like editing and yeah and then kind of gave it up we all got into high school and yeah. you know people get girlfriends and I played football for a little bit and video games weren't cool anymore yeah. so that kind of like phased out you know and um 
then I went into college and I was like, okay, what do like, how do I make this a career? Because it's mm -hmm. like at the time there wasn't really tick, like TikTok wasn't a thing. Like YouTube was a thing, but you had to be really big and mm -hmm. I'm very introverted, like naturally. And so yeah. like behind the camera is where I'm comfortable mm -hmm. and I wanted to make that into a career. Um, didn't know how. So I said, okay, I'm just going to go for a bit like a general business degree immediately hated it <laughs> and i had the most like profound probably conversation with a family member and he told me because i was like oh, i'm just i don't like it i don't know what to do and he said do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life yep and i don't know why that stuck with me so hard or why yep. that little comment meant so much but like it's like what i needed to hear mm -hmm. yeah it was kind of like the reassurance to like go pursue that. Yeah. And so the next day I switched my major to film studies. And then as like a, just to add on, I threw in communications as a minor. So I had like a little bit of marketing and a lot of film stuff and yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I know you remind me, he reminds me of Chris Worthington, who is the director of Multiply, the movie that we have going to theaters in May. Okay. And again, he, New editing, always had a camera in his hands. It's the happiest he was when he had the camera in his hands. Um, and that's how he feels too. He's like, it's just what I love and what I'm going to do. Like, I can't live without doing it. It's just who I am. It's what I love. I love creating. I love being behind the camera, yeah. catching and telling stories. And it's kind of like he lives in his own world behind that camera. And then we get to experience that. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the best things I can say about a cinematographer. You know, you, you see in pictures, you see in frames, you tell stories in the way that you see those. Um, and it's just fun to get to watch what y'all create, you know, on the other side of it, you know, that's on the feature film documentary style. But then you look at like the work you're doing now, which is in the medical industry, is still storytelling of people's businesses, yes. you know, and how you create that and the experience that we have when we're watching that content that's filtered through the way that you shoot it and the way that you edit it and tell that story. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And actually, there, there, you can argue that the vertical content is actually harder because you have literally like two seconds to mm -hmm. sell whatever you're trying to sell. And there does have to, you know, there has to be elements of storytelling in there and you can't set establishing frames for like more than half a set. Like everything is so quick. Mm -hmm. And like, it's funny because when I first started the vertical content, working at a marketing agency, they would send it back to me and be like, oh no, you have to make this faster. And I'm like, this is so fast already. Like, I don't understand, yeah. but it's just that like switch you have to make mentally. That's mm -hmm. why sometimes I'll like do some you know, travel stuff or like, uh, kind of like a documentary style of like a trip or whatever. And it's a completely different muscle that right. I have to work. Yeah. When I do that mm -hmm. because it's so different from social media. Huge. You know, that's interesting that you say that. So this next generation, sorry, we are a generation, the next one down, this one, um, the, the pacing of their generation is so much faster mm -hmm. than Insane. the pacing of our generation's yep. content. Yep. And that's one of the things that I love so much about Multiplied. And that's one of the things that Chris is such a stickler on is he wants to edit all his own things if it pertains to Multiplied because he's like the pacing has to be so much faster. Everybody that else wants to do it kind of wants the slower build up, mm -hmm. which is what has been. But this next generation, they need it like kicking like fast, 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 fast pace 100%. and to keep them engaged. It's funny with my kids and I went and watched a documentary that just released in theaters and my son looked at me afterwards. Great content, great message. And my son was like, to be honest, mom, I know this is all great and all, but I would have walked out. <laughs> it's too slow. He's like, I, it was so boring. It was just so slow. Even though the content was right. like, yeah. like, so moving, so touching. He was just like, and I even felt like, but I've been working with all these young kids. Yeah. I even felt like it was so, I was like, it's so slow. Like, come on already. Right. Like, move it along. Right. So. Well, it's because 90% of what we're digesting now mm -hmm. is social media. And yeah. like, it is the swipe, 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 swipe. Mm -hmm. And we know, you know, in social media land, it's yeah. your first two seconds, man. You Like you said, you don't have time for an establishing shot, a sweeping shot of the mountains. Yeah. Then you go into the village. That'd be so cool. Now, like, you get right into what's happening in the village now. What are yes. they doing now? Yes. Like it's action from 
the first second which means like that moment has to either be it's a make or break moment like it, it has to either it's either on or it's not and yep. if it's off just by a little bit yep you lose them and that's like the stress sometimes that comes yeah. from that uh you know even it's funny like even like i will shoot vertically on my camera and like light it a certain way and then somebody comes in and does a little phone like video and it, it does better than what i'm doing and, and that's not because of the quality it's just because of the way it was presented i think yeah yeah so no yeah. it is like we've been like cranking out for our nonprofit. we've been doing a ton of of real yes. shorts and all that right and i'm like initially me and hosanna yeah you know we'd be shooting all these things and we're putting our heart and soul into it and i'm writing all these things and it's taking me days to write it and then we'll shoot it for a couple of days and to crank out all these reels and we put it out there and yeah it looks great and everything and it's just not performing and then somebody else just pops on with their phone and shoots yeah. in, in 30 minutes they shoot a week's worth of content all of a sudden it's like yeah. going yes to the and I'm like, we're like, all right, I'm done. Hey, yeah. Because it does it. It's not about, it's really not about all that quality. I mean, quality's great. It's yeah. not, it, that's not it. It has a place for yeah. sure. Yes. But, yes. The authenticity is huge. That's like the word of the hour, authenticity. Uh, yes. For it to be real. Yeah. And it's got to be moving. That's more important now than the quality. Do you know what's interesting is we were, so we interviewed a makeup artist and we were talking about how hard it is to do makeup to look like you don't have makeup. Mm. like just to look natural right okay that's harder makeup than it is to be like Take make me look and, like this you know yeah. whole production right and then we're saying to produce the whole time you're trying to make it look like it's not overproduced right it's just you're trying to make it look like it's so normal mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is the same like you look at reality tv shows those things are so produced mm -hmm. but you have to be in the industry to know those things are produced that's right you know, because they do it so well in the cost of making it look like it's not produced, but it is produced. Right. You it's, know, it's unscripted television, but heavily produced. Yes. It's correct. actually, yeah, like you said, it's almost like harder. And it is. lighting is the same way. Like if you're trying to get a natural look, I'm sure you could speak to this. It's harder to make it look natural than it is to like put a huge key light in front of someone yep. and then a hair light. If it looks like, you know, like the, the best compliment I think a DP could get would be like, did, what like how many lights did you use i can't even tell yeah mm -hmm. and that's something i'm definitely working towards that's not really my strong suit at the moment but mm -hmm. i can appreciate like a really good dp when i see one. Oh yeah, yeah. that's yeah. huge that natural we've talked about that before cinematography like it's i made the mistake years ago of like you know i want it to look real natural so not much lighting in the cinematography he looks at me like what yeah like in other words you think that look, we're going to get it that natural just because it's natural? Yeah. No, I'm going to make it look the way that you think natural, you know, looks. Yes. It's like, yeah. that's the art. That yeah. That is the art. That is. And I think because of there being so much media, um, it's not trusted, right? So I think this next generation is looking for what can they trust. And when it looks well produced, for whatever reason it's saying, I can't trust that. That's not when they're selling them. Launching all these shorts and reels. Yeah. I kept getting that comment. AI, AI, AI. I'm yeah. like, no, I'm not AI. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I I'm real this. in the studio with lights and a camera. Look, yeah. I'm a per you know, yes. AI can do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm like, that was a thing. Yep. You're right. Yep. So, the so overproduced it is, the more they are like, that's not I can't yeah. believe that. Um, a little tip that I just that was cool is like filming everything the same focal length as your camera so like if or is your phone camera so like if it's a 24 mil on your phone camera i film all the talking heads that i do on my camera at that focal length because it kind of like it is better Emulated. quality but it does like people are used to seeing that focal length mm -hmm. and i've found that that's like actually worked pretty well wow so, yeah wow that's good little tricks little yeah. stuff like that uh-huh so t right now uh, it, you're doing um a lot of vertical, a lot of social. What is that? What's that? What's that specific world like? Uh, marketing is like anything vertical is probably going to be marketing. So it's usually really fast paced, quick turnaround times. Mm -hmm. Shoot days are pretty short, like three to four hours, because we're usually working with businesses that don't want us in the way. Yeah. So it's like really run and gun. Let me get out of your way. This is a business. I'm not going to like halt. And sometimes they'll even close down for like a half day for us, mm -hmm. but that's if you're lucky. So a lot of times you're like, literally there's clients coming in and out and you're just trying to like 
not be you're trying to really fly under the radar but right. the turnaround has to be really fast like a couple days uh, a lot of content and then you sort of like you want to get the stuff out that's most relevant at that time which mm -hmm. can be a struggle because sometimes they don't know what promotion they're running or whatever the business is doing like you have to come in with a really good plan on how you're going to execute the release of the content because you obviously fill you film it in one bulk and then right slowly release so master master plan is kind of paramount in that procedures are huge uh we were talking about this earlier but having people you can rely on that can replicate the look that you're trying to mm -hmm. go for totally mm -hmm. yeah Big. that's huge because you're cranking out a ton of content so yeah. you have yeah. to have help you can't do all of it yourself yeah the duplication yeah. is important that strategic planning of content mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean that's social media at its finest oh yeah you know otherwise it'll eat you up, it'll eat you, up. you know i mean exactly. it's like all you're focusing on that's probably what i get the most with businesses and stuff that's why i am a big advocate for vodcast what we're doing now if you've got a business and you start one you get one day's production out of that one day's production. You have a videographer, photographer, you are getting content for months yeah. to yeah. pump out. Yeah. You're getting sound bites, you're getting photos, you're getting quotes, you're getting a show. I mean, you're getting all these things out of pr production day of one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You and know? you guys, I've been in the background of some of these podcasts that you guys have here and the way you guys operate, just wanted to like pay homage to it because yeah. you would think from the outside that you guys have been doing this for 10 plus years, like yeah. the way you execute what you guys talk about excellence and like mm. doing things the right way. Mm. I mean, look at the set. Thanks. It's beautiful. And everything thanks. that you guys touch, I can tell because it has that stamp that, you know, you guys preach. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Try. <laughs> Let's go. Hey. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Adam. Hey. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, tr we try to, um, you know, that's definitely my heart, um, is, how can I help people hit excellence, quality, in the most efficient, productive possible way that you can? You know, this is what I do in Without my own life. Losing one or the other, right? Right. It's like a balance. It is a good, yes, it is. A, it is definitely a true balance. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing where it fits, you know what I mean? Like, like we're saying, if somebody comes to me and I'm like, what is your, what's your end goal? What are you wanting to do with it? Right. And if they tell me something like just social media or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, you're probably better to not invest here. Go invest in this. Y you know, like I want to help them whatever's best, whether it been a, you know, I think kindness circles back around and being a kind person, good things come to you. You know what I mean? So it's, trying to find what content fits where not everybody needs to have a show to this level mm -mm. right sure. um but certain people are spinning their wheels doing all these other things and i'm like if you would just bite the bullet and do this it solves all that and your quality's there your consistency is there your excellence is there like it's your whole brand it's right. what you are right you know and then others just need i'm like hey get you a little rig video yourself every day yeah. <laughs> saying these things do it yourself pay an editor Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I don't think and I don't think that it people talk about it enough like workflow, like yeah. getting a process in place because people will see a social media or whatever. OK, well, I just have to shoot that or I just have mm -hmm. to do that. And they're not thinking about the process that it's going to take to make that consistent. Whoa. If you do not have that in place, you're going to be a one hit wonder. Yeah. You're going to do something. You're going to get fired up about it. You're going to do it for a day, a week or two weeks. And then it's going to fizzle out. Yeah. You have like got to get the workflow like yeah. with our socials. Monday is my filming day. I film everything on Monday. I have scripts ready. I know what I'm going to do. And then I'm passing that off to an editor who knows their exact role mm -hmm. and what they're going to do and yep. how we're going to edit it, when it's going to be delivered. And then we do it all over again next week. But everything is in place. And if you don't have that in place, you know, you're going to fizzle out. Even if it's you doing it, you have to have it instilled in you for yourself, you know, or, or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And like life happens, right? And then a you're like, oh man, I didn't post today. Right. And it's like, the, the, you know, that one post might not matter, but like compound that over a couple months. And how you negate that is pre-production. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you've like, we shoot for set life, like what, whatever you deem can be maintainable, which is also what I say for people that come here. I'm like, what's your end goal? And then what is actually maintainable in your life? Let's use the scenario of going to the gym. Everybody wants to go on a diet at the turn of the year. And they're like, one, seven days a week to the gym. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> You didn't even go a day. Yeah, it's, it's too uh, no, you're not too big of a leap. It is. So I'm like, try to make 
a day that you can be consistent for like six months right okay like this is not a sprint this is a marathon right. here if you want real right. change in your life That's we're not true. doing it overnight it's going to be over time so like what can you maintain what is your end goal do you just want a season how many episodes is that going to be if that's 12 how many days could you actually shoot mm -hmm. can you give me one can you give me two like well, how many days can you do this to what quality can you be doing that right. at and so if you say okay i'm going to shoot the month before and i'm going to schedule out everything for a month so when life happens guess what schedule's still going mm -hmm. you're not worried if you're posting or not posting it's already done right. that's that's forward thinking, that's planning now yep. to be scheduled out. So it's like when something doesn't go out from the studio, I look at everybody like, how? Mm -hmm. Like how? This was scheduled out. We've already planned yep. this yep. way ahead. Yep. So what happened in the system? 100%. Like where did something get off yep. or was there a glitch or something happened? Yep. So it's just finding where that, that went wrong. But that's what we try to do here at the studio is try to help people because they, they don't know what they don't know. They don't live in production. That's why we're the experts of that, you know, and just sitting down with the client saying, okay, how do we help you do this that fits you and what you need to do? Because everybody's different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And otherwise they're not getting what they want and you're not getting what you want. And that yeah. relationship over the long term will not last. No, it's and frustrating. So you might make some money. Yeah. That's not worth it. Yeah. It's the <laughs> I, frustration. Yeah. Yeah. You want to work with people that you can grow with, mm -hmm. right? And like mm -hmm. mature with mm -hmm. and figure out how can I make you better and how can you make me better? And yes. that those are the kind of relationships that I really want to get into in so, this New Year's. Yeah. It's funny. Just yesterday I was on the call with um, a production team that shoots here. And they came and did a, a big shoot the other day. And, you know, our heart here is to collaborate and have partnerships with production companies and make them look great, show them off to their clients, cater to their clients so that they look really well. Um, and I had my, which would be my client, called and was like, man, I just can't thank you enough. Every single time we shoot with y'all, I get more business. Because we shot with you. Love it. Because they get there, you get them fired up, your excellence, your, you know, ideas and all the things that you pour into and how you just promote us and talk so well of us and just solidify that we do good, good work with our client every time they book more with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm it. like, that's the way it's supposed to be. And it's know? fulfilling. Like we talked on Sunday or yeah, Sunday about how the job like there has to be a give and take of what you're putting out into the world and what it gets gives back to you yeah. right and that could be a number of things like it could be like satisfaction from a project or do, helping someone else do really well mm -hmm. and those kind of jobs that give back to you are like my favorite because it yeah. makes makes me feel so good that i'm helping somebody and then yeah. they do really well and they're happy you know and everyone's mm -hmm. happy and it, that's like like you said, it's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. I, I, I told her that's, I, I was like, we were talking about it. And I was like, gosh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You know? And she's like, no, thank you. And I was like, well, you know, we tried. And I was like, why am I overcomplicating this? Like, it's just being kind. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just being kind in the world. And we just both started dying laughing. And I was like, we're just kind to each other yeah. and care and want to do right. And it was like a, another phone call we got the other day and, Oh, this production was in such a pickle. They had shot a big guest in the sound, got distorted, so they had to scrap the episode. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I was like sweating talking to them myself. I was like, and so they were like, can you help us? And it's late after hours. It's the next day they need this done. They've all flown in from LA and New York. And um, I just was like, um, I could have easily been like, yeah, it's after hours. You're crazy to try to do that tomorrow. You know, yeah, sucks for you. No, but I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sweating knowing that I would be just panicked in that same situation. And I would just want somebody to be kind and help me if they could, you know? And I was like, hey, let me make some phone calls. Let me give you some names. Let me see what you can do. If I can, I'm sh my studio's booked, but if I could take lunch away and give you a lunch hour, I'll, I will help you however I can with whatever I've got, you know, and we just stayed talking and essentially they ended up working it out, but they wrote me back and were like, man, thank you so much. I look forward to working with you someday, Love it. you know, 
and that's just how I say kindness. Like it's, it's not like you have to try to demand in this industry, mm -hmm. everything you want to take from it. Mm -hmm. I do believe using your creativity and your kindness lends to more partnerships, more work and, yeah. and, and more things moving forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something you about know. that golden rule. Yep. Do unto others. That's the golden rule, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's yeah. hope. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do unto others. Is yep. you, you know, like people doing to you. It's huge. That's huge. Yeah. It's, it's simple, you know. In in a world that's so competitive, especially business. I mean, mm -hmm. you, that's the nature of business. You're trying to do your thing. People are trying to do their thing. It's counterintuitive yeah. for business. But if you will take a simple principle like that, and just take care of people, even when it doesn't benefit you. Yeah. Having yeah. believing that that thing is going to come full circle, that goes a long yeah. way. People would trust that if they would believe that thing, mm -hmm. they'd see a difference. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a difference. People mm -hmm. who who operate like that, well, not with that. There's a you can have a competitive spirit as it were. Mm -hmm. And that's different. And that's different. That yeah. means you're always trying to like muscle out the other guy and like, Hey, what do you, you know, yeah. if you gotta, you gotta eliminate that. It's good to work hard, but do yeah. your thing. Forget about everybody yeah. else. Do your thing. Yeah. Do what you're doing. You don't have to be worried about the other guy, whether well, they're cring cringing on my business, they're doing all, just forget about it. Just do your yeah. thing. Do good work. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about. That's what you do. And yeah. that's what we do around here. So with your business, What's next? What does this look like? What do you, you know, what are you aspiring to? Yeah, so uh, it's really simple, actually. I had a lot of goals, personal and business-wise, that I set out for the new year, like a lot of people. So uh, I would say not everybody, Adam. Proud of you. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Um, for ne next for me is really just like putting my head down and like doing the hard work and yep. then just being patient. And I think um, something that I really want to continue to work towards is just like add adding value to people and businesses. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like, you, like there it is so competitive. And I'm not reinventing the wheel. Like there's a ton of different people even in Houston that do what I do. Right. So it's just like we were talking about with the relationships, like finding the right fit and yep. adding value to people. Mm -hmm. That's a huge goal for this year. And then just put my head down and really like working hard. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. There may be a lot of people that do what you do, but there's nobody that does it the way you do it. And that's the beauty of <laughs> Thank this. Thank you so much. You that's know, true. that is the beauty of this. You, your eye, your editing, your messaging, your filter, your branding, who you are and the way you see that is unique and special. And there are the businesses out there that need that perspective and that view and in your way. Um, that is one of my favorite, favorite things about creatives. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's so new, uniquely different, even though you do the same thing, you don't do the same thing. You know, you start talking about a script with somebody, like we all read a script right now together. Every single one of us would pitch that differently. Yep. We would be seeing something yep. completely different, yep. same content, yep. right? Yep. And so um, that's, that's what makes this so unique. Even if there are a million people doing it, no one is doing it through the filter of Adam. Totally. You know, I agree with that. And then it's about the experience that people have with you too, that, yep. that speaks to Huge. how well you do as a business. Like yep. I could shoot the best content for somebody, but if they didn't really like it when I was there and they didn't mm -hmm. like me as a person, I wasn't kind to them. I'm not going to get the call back. Probably not going to do more. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. And the professionalism's not there, mm -hmm. you know, in this industry, it's hard when you're starting a, a business as like a freelancer to see yourself as a full business uh, of saying, well, it's just me. And I'm like, but it's really not just you. You actually, you may not have people on payroll, but you got lots of subcontractors that are working for you to accomplish a job. Yep. You know, I mean, you're going to have an editor, you're going to have somebody looking at branding packages, you're going to have another camera op, you're going to have, you have other people. Right. They may not be on your payroll, but you got other services that are helping you deliver the product that you're going to be delivering. So it's seeing yourself in that light of, I am a business. I am professional. We'll have invoices. We'll have contracts that bring the business professionalism to it. Because when you're going business to business, it's what they know. Mm, right. It's what they know. So you've got to approach a business True. like a business True. for yeah. them to then go, okay, there's value there. Yeah. It's just, yeah. that's, that's just how they see. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I know. But we're out of time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, Adam, we have, like, really, really, really yes. enjoyed having you. 
Oh, this has been so great. Thank you guys for having me. Hey, if people want to contact you, if they want to get a hold of you, what's the best way? How do they do it? Yeah, so Instagram is adm.photos or the medical Instagram is luma, L-U-M-A dot medical. Awesome. All right. So get hooked up with Adam Johnson here. So listen, we've enjoyed um, having you here. We've enjoyed being here. Yes. This has been Set Life. I'm Kelly Lejay. And I'm Amber Buto. This is Adam. We'll see you next time. Well, not with Adam, but with us. See you next time. (laughs) Ha <laughs> ha